the Southern Swimming Pool has been making a splash in the turbulent, tinwald political waters, leaving some political commentators to suggest that the minister is out of her depth. In contrast, the minister has suggested that some members are floundering in the political whirlpool, and the whole pool debate has allowed a range of thorny administrative issues to float to the surface. We'll hear later from former Castleton MHK, Tony Brown, Southern Pool Board member Barbara Brereton, and Education Minister Julie Edge. But first, Speaker of the House of Keys, Dewan Watterson, who led the charge for the Southern members. Uh, miscommunication is um, something of an understatement with regards to what's gone on in the last sort of couple of weeks. There's been... Uh, horrendously bad communication with members of Tinwald, uh, with members of the pool board, with local authority representatives, and with the public at large. I mean, uh, sitting on a press release from uh, Thursday through till Monday that was uh, all ready to go seems bizarre. Uh, it, so there were a number of uh, communications failures that sort of pepper this um, uh, sequence of events that uh, I think have brought uh, further distrust uh, from all of those parties in in the handling of the uh, the, the overall scenario. So let's start then. I mean, you you mentioned there there were two recommendations, one from DOI, Mm. one from Department of Education, Sport and Culture. Um, So what what are those differences then uh, in, in relation to those recommendations? The Department of Infrastructure recommendation in relation to this report is that the management of the regional pool should be moved to desk it will be that for then for desk to determine how best to manage the regional pools and to make any decisions around closure of pools or seek additional funding if this is required. So I think DOI left it far more open. So these, this is definitely a recommendation from the Department of Education, Sport and Culture, despite the fair amount of finger pointing towards the Department of Infrastructure as well. And, and there are several pools in the east of the island, but um, the eastern ratepayers don't pay any rates towards those, do they? So the historic argument was that Douglas Corporation had given the land for the building of the NSC. That's got to be about 25 years ago now that the NSC was built. So they're still dining out on that uh, particular promise. Um, but Douglas, but also Braddon, pays nothing towards swimming pool facilities. Garth and Onken all pay no rates towards uh, swimming pools, where um, in the south they'll be universally paying a 6.1p rate. In the west and the north it varies, but it's uh, it's around about 2.5p in the pound on the rates in the west and the north to support swimming pools. There is an underwriting support there of a number of different facilities in the east where there's no rates paid, um, but seemingly no money for any of the regions, so one of the pools had to close. And again, it just doesn't seem quite either fair or consistent in terms of treatment. But you can also see from the way that the exercise has been done with the report into the affordability of regional pools that there's been a complete lack of understanding in the department coming forward about looking at creative solutions. For example, the South, um, many of those authorities were already budgeting for a 6.1p rate. Um, That proposal uh, or those um, amounts haven't been factored for, say, the West or the North in terms of hypothetically looking at that scenario and what it was raised. And if you look at an all-island 6p rate, there's half a million pounds worth of rate income that can go to support pools. That's almost a third of the total deficiency budget for, um, uh, for, for regional pools. I, th- I think initially the proposal was that all those paying mm-hmm. a pool rate would pay 6p, and then it was left that, well, maybe it would be that... Uh, local authorities could decide well if if a local authority is allowed to decide whether it pays two and a half or six p uh, and its duty is to its rate payers and it knows the taxpayer is going to pay anyway uh, the, the the deficit uh, you, maybe maybe tinwald by by allowing for that uh, choice uh, has, has created a bit of confusion and add into that the skepticism that the department was looking at potentially closing the pool then why would you throw money into the pool if it's only going to get closed down anyway so i know that some local authorities have said that they had budgeted for the money hadn't paid it all over on the basis that if they shut the pool well why would we have bothered putting it into a facility that's only going to close anyway so i I can quite understand that reticence as well so uh, that problem is not really solved because um whilst the tinwald motion says that 
uh, the southern pool will be efficiently and effectively funded until a replacement facility is built. So far, the tr uh, ed education minister is really only talking about a one-year reprieve so far. Yeah, w we are talking about long millions for all of the three local pools to have a, an extended 30-year life. The realism is that in the south of the island, we're looking forward to getting a new facility, something that previously hasn't been committed to, of course, but getting a new replacement facility for what is an old facility. It was built 1978, 1980. So uh, it is old. It is starting to creak. But the capital requirement that was identified in the surveys report was uh, 369,000 for the next uh, five years. Um, if you can do things a little bit differently on top of that, and I know that some of that work has already started, then that's actually an affordable rolling program within the already budgeted minor capital works budget that's been underspent for the last few years. And certainly uh, in the eight years that were surveyed um, in a recent FOI request, only £19,000 in the last eight years had been spent on the Southern Pool. So uh, chronic underinvestment and also... When you look at those deficiency budgets that the department has given all of the regional pools in, just in order to survive, they've been pretty static for a decade as well. All the while, of course, uh, budgets at the NSC have been going up and up and up. Is there an argument that uh, could reasonably be put that in times of, of uh, tax shortages, uh, we really can't afford to have as many pools as we have at the moment? I think that might be the case if the pools were underused but that's really not the case um all of the regional pools are are very well used including the, the nsc as well we're definitely a swimming nation and um at the meeting that i had with the southern swimming club uh, it was brought home to me that the difference between the southern swimming club was two places in the island games medal table just for that club and the, the athletes that they put up so not only are we a, a swimming nation the south is one of the strongest areas in that um, so the use and the value that I got out of all generations of the pool, um, but especially in terms of our athletes, is phenomenal. So um, whilst I could understand that argument when you're competing in a, a, a far busier um, pool of activities, then really in terms of uh, indoor activities, there's enough complaints as it is about not having enough things to do and bad days on the Isle of Man, he said, looking out the window. Um, but uh, I think that that's uh, not an arg argument that's going to stack up at the moment, looking at the utilisation of the, uh, the the regional pools on the Isle of Man. So in, in terms then of the department's recommendation, which was that uh, they could no longer support the Southern Swimming Pool, it now appears that uh, thanks to uh, new information, some of which uh, that you've uh, uh, put in your report, the department is able to support the pool at least for another year. Um, is, is it time i i, I mean i, let me, I don't let know me just, let, me just, let me just address that point phil because there's no new information in here um my starting point for my report was what the uh, desc had put in its work um and the budgets that they had received from the southern swimming pool board so to that extent i was working off exactly the same information that the department had at that point so there's really not much in it apart from a little bit of creative thinking um and looking critically at whether actually all the assumptions that have been put in there were, were going to stack up there's not an awful lot new in this it's just a different way of looking at it and that's that lack of imagination that's also a cause of sort of real frustration when that report that was produced by government said it was impossible to imagine any other scenario other than closing the pool it's crackers bearing in mind we all know that the pool no longer has a significant uh, future, certainly not past uh, four or five years. Why would depreciation be included in there? Well, the, the strange thing is that it's a, it was the reality that the pool wasn't going to be there for the next 50 years was the reason that the depreciation is so high. You take the, the value of those capitalised fixed assets, you divide it by the number of years expected life. And because they'd revised down the expected life of those assets, depreciation went up. As anyone with a passing familiarity of accounts knows, that's not something you need to find cash for. And I'm now worried that um, the Department of Education is going to see that depreciation bill go up again next year because the life will be even shorter based on their own time scales for completing a replacement facility. That'll lead to a bigger deficit and that will strengthen their case for closing it down. But it's not. It's an accounting entry. This is not in the long term a going concern pool. Uh, it really just needs cash flowing out to the end of its life. 
Is there a case, I, I, mean, I don't know, maybe you, you feel that this is already happening, but is there a case for a, a, a concerted effort, particularly on the part of the Southern members, to try and work more closely with the department to try and deliver um, better solutions in relation to these facilities, particularly the Southern Pool, but also uh, Castle Russian High School? Well, uh, the Southern members of Tynwald, so that was a four MHKs plus uh, uh, two MLCs who live in the South uh, wrote to the Treasury Minister um, two years ago and said, "We are our top priority is Castle Wishin High School. Um, we want to be part of the solution. However, this is such of a priority and we've waited so long for it that we are going to consider how we vote in future budgets depending on government's performance in this area. Two years later, we're not an awful lot further forward. And so this has really galvanised support between the, the four of us in terms of um, digging in and saying, actually, if, you, if you're not going to prepare to look after a significant proportion of our nation and the, the education of its children, then really I don't see how we support the government through its budgetary ambition spending it everywhere else. So um, this is a really important thing for us. The swimming pool has been the, um, the latest trigger in that. Uh, but still two years down the line, we're still woefully underimpressed with the amount of actual progress on the replacement Castle Wishing High School. You've been a minister, so you do know that it is easier to help members who are willing to help the mm. department. You sort of skirted around the, 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 the question that I asked, which is how can uh, the four Southern members, uh, four, four Southern MHKs, together with the two MLCs, if, if, if they feel that way inclined, work more closely with the department to try and help the department deliver on, on your ambition? Well, I'd like to think that, firstly, the paper that I produced for the department demonstrates that we want to be part of the solution as much as uh, creating the problems, and here is a solution to the Southern Swing Pool's immediate problem. But also, if you go back and, and look at over questions in Keys, in Tinwald, uh, over the last year or two, you'll find nothing other than, well, when's the minister going to engage with local members over the scheme? What can we do? It, it, we have been consistently pushing at this, but it's been consistently kept behind closed doors and members that are very much an arm's length. So um, not only has there been a, a bit of a suspicion that nothing's going on, there's been no evidence of anything going on, but it's not for want of wanting to be involved in roll up our sleeves as Southern members in terms of make, getting this over the line, because we know how important it is for our constituents. Um, you know, I've got a s seven year old. I'd like to see that he has a chance of going to a, a, a new castle Russian. I suspect the, my eldest who's already there is going to miss the opportunity. That was Russian MHK, Dewan Watterson. We'll hear from the Minister after the break. I'm joined now by Pool Board member Barbara Brereton, Julie Edge MHK, and first up, Tony Brown. I think it's pretty obvious to the public that there's a lot of complacency gone on um, in, in the South in terms of political complacency. I know personally I have agitated now for at least four years uh, about getting something done to secure the swim pool uh, for the long-term future, and I've been doing that because I'd heard that things were uh, having problems. Um, I've helped where I can. I'm not in politics anymore. Um, I have some knowledge of how systems work, um, and clearly communication is a problem. Clearly commitment is a problem. Um, I know that uh, the minister uh, has said quite clearly that there is a new swimming pool uh, in the uh, provisions for Castle Russian, the new Castle Russian, um, and to be honest, I think the issue that government has is that the people of the South don't accept that because of what's happened over the last few years. Um, and I think the big issue we have is that uh, government and Tinwald has not been honouring the agreement that Tinwald and government made many years ago, which was for regional pools, there would be a 2.5p rate. Uh, contribution as a token contribution from the local authorities who were constituent authorities of the pool hence why there was a, a swimming pool, pool in each place and that's been increased or the, they're able to increase it up to 8p I think it is under a new order um, and uh, government would meet the deficiency and I think the problem has been that the department has been to some degree under pressure and it looks like underfunded to enable them to fund properly uh, the pools and what we've seen is a deterioration. Clearly what the people of the South want is a commitment and a clear policy from government 
that they're going to provide a new swimming pool and in the interim they're going to fund properly the existing swimming pool and keep it open until a new pool is available. That's all the people of South want and without that the people of South will not trust uh, government on this issue. Barbara Brereson, I mean you've, you've been on the pool board for, uh, well I don't know, you tell us how, how many years? Um, I was on the pool, I can't remember the exact, exact dates, but I was on the pool board previously um, and I was re-elected as a commissioner in 2021 and I was asked by my authority to sit on the pool board. So I sat on the pool board. I've now been on the pool board since 2021. So over the course of the last three years, you'll have uh, seen some uh, interesting figures and, and facts which... Um, um, has resulted in the in the pool board and the department working quite closely, uh, certainly in, in recent years. Yes, the, the department and the pool board have worked very closely together. It became obvious in October 2021 that the pool was facing problems financially, insolvency, um, at which stage we then contacted the department and there was a an agreement I have to say that the officers of the department were very helpful. And subsequent to, to, to those discussions, um, how did we end up in the position where the, uh, the pool board effectively had to issue a uh, rebuttal of the report that the department used to base its decision? I'm not aware that we uh, issued a rebuttal. We did issue a rebuttal on the finances. Um, we asked for the subvention. Our administrator, who is a qualified accountant, came forward with the facts and figures and our projected budget for 24-25 was in line with the 434, which was the subvention from the department. We were slightly looking to our fellow local authorities to pay the 6.1. Um, the three authorities paid 6.1, the other authorities paid the required two and a half. To meet our commitment financially, we had to look at having 6.1 from all authorities. We did not ask for any further funding from the department above the sus subvention, which was 434. Uh, Minister, then, um, y you uh, have at times looked a little bemused uh, at, at some of the, the comments uh, that have gone on. Uh, it's fair to say that um, you are certainly being painted by many as, as the, the bad guy in all of this. Um, what do you have to say in your defence? Um, certainly, Phil, uh, it's the way that this has actually turned out, um, I think, really for the South, and Barbara's just said it, I, I came in to be the Minister in October 21. We've worked very closely with Barbara as Chair of the Southern Pool Board and the Vice Chair with the challenges they had. She's just said they could have been heading for insolvency. And as a department, I was the new Minister in, and I know that my officers and, and myself have met with the Southern Pool Board. We've done everything we can to support them. Um, I think what really um, does cause me real concern is that the full master plan for Castle Russian High School which I've got here today and you you can see the full report um, I obviously received that in November 2022 we did a, a presentation to all Timwald members in February 23 because I, I did say to my officers we need to be completely open and transparent with regards to this that presentation was attended I do believe by all southern MHKs and it's quite clear if they'd read the report, there is a, an introduction in there that talks quite clearly about the Southern Pool, its life expectancy, and my department's strategy going forward for a replacement pool. So it's been known, and I actually think that meeting was the 14th of February 23 with all members. Um, so it is quite shocking, really, what has come out of, um, the, you know, the, the comments around the closure of the Southern Pool. It is only a recommendation from my department. I cannot close our pool. Um, we understood the sensitivities, or certainly I understood the sensitivities. I've worked with Barbara previously in my role when I was in education, and um, 
I know how important it would be to Barbara as the chair that we were sensitive around the employee situation for the Southern Pool if announcements like that came out. Um, I, you know, I'm aware that the, the, there is comments from the Southern MHKs about communication. Uh, we've we've communicated in the appropriate way. I've followed all governance processes for the government. I've taken this um, proposal and papers through um, the right channels. It's gone through the Council of Ministers for for the the decision and recommendation for me to go and have that chance to go and speak to the Southern Pool Board, which we did on the 10th of January. So. Um, you know, I think there is um, Tim Wood shenanigans going on. I, I think Mr. Thomas said on the floor on Tuesday when I was questioned. And um, really what we should be all doing is looking at the future of our island as national politicians. And um, yes, the major investment that was announced yesterday for the south of the island, I think, is fantastic. I think it's excellent for education and the future of education in the south of our island. I do believe we have now moved that step closer. We've got the design funding from Treasury. I'm the first in the new process, and the new process, sadly, from Treasury on capital procedures has delayed many announcements. However, I I do believe from the way that it's presented by the current Treasury Minister now that you have to go into this project development um, structure. I'm the first to come out of that project development structure with significant investment of over £3 million to move forward strategically on the Castle Russian site, not just considering um, a school. We've considered the whole future of education, sports and culture for that site and um, that's the vision we've come out with. And um, um, you know, I do want to say to the people of the south, I have bumped into many. I know not, I've got lots of friends down the south of the island and they say it's not been clear from government that there is a new school and there is a new sports complex with swimming facilities. It is all there in that, that um, plan from November 22. And I do want to say to the people of the south, this is going to be significant investment and the future of education, sports and community facilities for the south. The sports complex will be accessible out of hours of the school to be utilised by the community as all of our school facilities are. Is there anything, Minister, that you could have done um, or that you now, with the benefit of hindsight, look back at and think, maybe we should have done that slightly differently. Perhaps we should have engaged with those people more readily. Uh, Anything at all? Um, Certainly, from my point of view, the reaction that's come actually mainly from my Timwell colleagues, I think, is 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 probably the one area that's disappointing. But quite clearly, we know we're in a in a parliament now that um, if if you give them some information the day before a pool board, that they perhaps won't keep that uh, allegiance uh, to their Timwell colleagues. Very disappointing when we're trying to change the culture in government, and it really does start at the top of government. OK. Um, Tony Brown, I mean, perhaps it would help uh, our listeners if, if we maybe had a look back. Um, and, of course, some of, of your uh, long experience in Manx politics uh, is, is ideal for doing this. How did we get to this uh, position of having uh, regional pools? Because the, the, the one in the south was the first, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, there was a long battle went on. I mean, it was my early days as a commissioner. I joined in 76 and uh, discussions were ongoing then. And of course, Castle Russian had been built in the 60s without a swimming pool. And uh, it was always a issue that was brought up that the uh, the school needed a pool. And negotiations, negotiations went on for quite some years. And in fact, what they came up with was an idea which the then local government board and the board of education, as they were then called, came up with a proposal that we would have a regional pool built on a school site, which would be run by local government and would be uh, available to the children in the school. And that went to Tinwald and the basis of the decision, which is similar to public sector housing, was um, that the deficiencies would be met by government through a vote from Tinwald. And that's how it's remained. And the only slight difference in the pools were, or in the pool, which then echoed through to the west and the north, was that there would be a small rate contribution, and it was only ever envisaged to be small, um, as a token of commitment to having a regional pool in the south. And that basis has carried on from uh, really up to today or up to recent years. 
I think one of the problems we have is we have now have two departments involved in this, which is absolutely daft. There has to be one minister in charge of it, and that's either the Minister for Education, Sport and Culture or the Minister for Infrastructure. You cannot have two ministers clashing where one has one policy and one has another, and the Minister of Education is trying to get something secured uh, and has to persuade, if you like, and certainly as far as the uh, regional pool boards are concerned, they have to deal with two different departments. That makes no sense at all. The other issue, of course, is that um, when the now Treasury Minister was Minister for Education, I think we have to recall he would not give a commitment to a new pool uh, for uh, Castle Russian he, and the South. He would not commit to that at all. And we, it's gone on from there. The pool boards have tried to do what they can, or the South one, because the others have been... Uh, funded in a reasonable way because the newer pools, the one that needs replacing, we know is the south. So they've been trying to get something dealt with. This use of the term uh, that the uh, pool will become insolvent, it's not a company. The pool is funded by government and it's a deficiency payment to ensure that the pool can be funded adequately for its staff, for its operations, its maintenance, and in fact, ultimately, its renewal. The capital scheme will be a government capital scheme. I was interested to hear the minister say that the uh, new tre Treasury policy on capital schemes is something that's happening. Now, I'm presuming that Treasury policy has been endorsed by the Council of Ministers because they're the government. Uh, it, Treasury are not free agents anymore like they used to think they are. And I have to say, we have drifted back in recent years to an old system where Treasury controlled policy through finance. And we stopped that in Council of Ministers during Mars Walker's time and onwards up to my time. And, and it doesn't work if Treasury controls policy because Treasury looks at it with blinkered views, basically. Um, and, you know, the whole point is that the whole community is being told one thing. There's no money. There is money. It's a capital investment. And if we're going to have a good quality of life in the Isle of Man, it's not just a good quality of life in Douglas. It's got to be in the regions. And we are a small island and we have regional differences. And these pools play an important part in our community and in the leisure facilities of our community. I know that from my own son, who's now an adult son, but when he was a child, he, was, he lived in the swimming pools in the Somalis as did lots of other children, because it was somewhere to go where they could enjoy themselves. Um, you've got to keep those things important. They've got to be at the forefront, and government has to prioritise that. And I have to say, I don't think the minister um, is, is really um, being treated fairly. I know that she's under pressure, but it's a government issue. It's not just the minister's issue. The, depart uh, the department has a role to play. But without the backing of the council of ministers, the department can't do anything. And what the people of the South want is a new school, and why is it taking so long, and a retention of a swimming pool. It's as simple as that. And what government has to do is tell Treasury, how do we fund it? And if you sped that funding over, as it would be, something like 50 or 60 years as a capital investment, in fact, the costs are likely to be cheaper than it is to keep the pool open now because of all the maintenance that required that, to keep it going. Do you think part of the problem, I mean, you're, you're famously... Um, keen on ensuring the, the um, accountability and lines of responsibility, things like this. Um, do you think part of the problem is because there are these two fu funding sources, part of it is, is local government, part of it is central government, do you think that, that creates some level of confusion in, in politicians' minds? Well, it creates uncertainty. And it also, you have two different personalities. You have one minister who may be keen on a pool, and you might have another minister who isn't keen on a pool. And then you've got a clash. The point is, you have one line of responsibility. The whole basis of the system of ministerial government in the Isle of Man, and don't forget, our government is not elected by the people. The government is not elected by the people under our system. The members are elected to the House of Keys. Then, well, now it's the House of Keys, but it should be Tynwald. Tynwald is meant to elect the chief minister. Um, and the chief minister then selects his ministers or her ministers, and then they're appointed by the governor. So they're there to do a job um, for the Isle of Man. So you've got a situation where if you have two ministers with two different roles who aren't in a party political system, and sometimes even in them you have problems, and I don't agree with parties, by the way, for the Isle of Man, um, what you have is a clash. And you cannot have confusion like that. 
It's it's very easy for government to sort this out. It's an order to Tynwald. It'll take literally um, an hour to draft up the order or a couple of hours and the ministers and council ministers to agree and it goes to Tynwald and it's approved. So it's either Minister for Education who's responsible for the regional swimming pools and the NSC or it's the Minister for Infrastructure. It cannot be both. It's nonsense. Barbara Brereton, I mean, the, the, the pool board obviously has been been through the mill a bit over the course of the last uh, year or so, yes. and certainly over the last few months. But probably more importantly than that, your staff um, effectively were facing redundancy two or three weeks ago, and, and now uh, uh, there's, there's much more uh, positive news. Um, how, how difficult is that? Bearing in mind, effectively, as commissioners, you are responsible for for making all the right decisions you have a relatively small budget uh, so you don't have a, a vast team of advisors there to to, to help uh, how difficult has it been as 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 a, for, for the pool boards uh, over the course of this uh, period it's been extremely difficult for the pool board um, in march 2022 we went to the department because we were had problems and as i said earlier on the department were very helpful um, the it's the money side of it but what i would like to point out here that we are local commissioners but we are volunteers mm. We are not paid. And a lot of the issues and criticism of the pool board have been extremely difficult to deal with. What you have to remember is that we are volunteers, that we all have other jobs, etc. There was some criticism about the steering boards, that we didn't attend the steering boards. We attended... I'm no longer chairman, by the way. I stood down as chairman. Our chairman has suffered a bereavement, which is why I'm here today. The the way we have actually tried, we our job, even though we're volunteers, is to protect the staff and to protect the pool for the people of the Isle of Man. Because it's not just the South people that actually use the South Pool. It's all over the island. People visit all the pools on the Isle of Man and the demographics of this island prove that you have to have facilities in the four corners of the island. We do not have a bus system that actually allows somebody to hop on a bus 10 minutes down the road, you're at a pool. We have to protect these pools and it's been extremely at the forefront of what we've done is we there are lots of legacy issues which this pool board has dealt with and it, <clears throat> we went into special measures we made had to make some very tough very unpopular decisions in for instance closing the cafe reducing our opening hours to 5.5 days a week we have to protect the core business and the core business is the pool. And in relation then to the the new uh, way forward, uh, do we know whether all the local authorities have supported the 6.1% uh, sorry 6.1p uh, rate that's been called for? I know uh, one uh, at least has uh, Aubrey and Russian because obviously I'm the clerk but uh, uh, the uh, have the other boards we have to wait for the other authorities to come forward. I do know that my authority did pay the 6.1 and will continue to pay it. And I do know that two other authorities have agreed to pay the 6.1. The 6.1 came up at the political meeting um, last Thursday um, where the four MHKs and... Um, Mrs. Uh, Jane uh, Paul Wilson was there um, and there was a, an agreement that they would go back to their boards and ask for this 6.1. It it makes a difference for us if whether we get 2.5 or 6.1 and if we get 6.1 is 55,000 which will help us. If we look at the projected budget for 2004 and 2005 we 
over the last two years, all the regional pools and the NSC um, were given an extra amount to meet with the energy costs, etc. When we set the budget for the Southern Pool, we did we took into account the fact that we wouldn't get that this year. So the 434 subvention that we're actually asking for will bring us back even, but it gives us no wriggle room whatsoever. Um, if we get 6.1 from all these southern local authorities, then we've got the min a minute amount of 11,000 to actually, after we've done all our costs, our payroll, etc. I would like at this stage to say that our staff have been extremely supportive, not always easy, um, but we have taken deci difficult decisions and worked on those. Can I just say, I don't think anybody should get hung up too much on the rate contribution. It is meant to be a token contribution, always was, to show commitment from the local authorities that they were involved with the pools. It was never meant to be a proper funding process. Um, and it can't be because the rate uh, income is too small, as Barbara's clearly demonstrated. What we need is a clear policy from government, and I'm talking about council ministers now, a clear policy from the council ministers that the regional pools will be funded under a structure which is in place or amended if it has to be and whether or not there will be a rate contribution from the uh, constituent local authorities. Now, get that clear and all this argument goes away. You've got the swimming pool board who've been struggling and I know this because I've had discussions with them uh, who've been struggling because of really what they see as a total lack of support and sometimes uh, information not being what it should be to help them do their job because, as, as clearly Barbara says, they're volunteers. They're not full-time politicians. Tell me, is now, that from the local authorities not providing information? No, no, th okay. they're not getting the advice they should be getting, Sorry. I don't. I believe, from what I've heard, from officials in government. They're getting some advice, not your department, I think, as Barbara's covered that, since you've taken over there, it's it's improved and it's much better than it was. But you still have conflicting advice from two separate departments and not one minister in charge. It cannot continue like that. So I think the point is, w the issue is not so much about the whether it's 2.5p or 6.1, or I think it can go up to 8 pence. The issue is about the major funding of the pools, which is outside of that. And whether there's a contribution from the regional local authorities to, if you like, play their part in securing the pools, which is actually minimal. I mean, it's £96,000 at the moment for the South, I think. Yeah. £96,000, and the minister needs... Her deficiency is, what, nearly half a million. So, Stop messing about so, and get the structure right, and the minister has a far easier job Treasury understand what good policy is. They have to fund that policy. It's not for Treasury to make policy in these issues or you don't need ministers in departments and you don't need departments. The minister determines it. The minister can then deal on a, a good basis with the regional pools throughout the island and everybody knows where they stand. And these arguments don't happen. Um, and what it does is all, that, all that's happened in the South, all that's happened in the South is the vast majority of the community has been upset You've got people concerned about losing an important leisure facility and you've had the minister getting hassle because people rightly focus on the minister when it's not necessarily only the minister causing the problem, i.e. the minister is not necessarily getting the backing from council of ministers and treasury to enable her to do her job. So, uh, minister, um, you, there's, you seem to be getting a little bit of support there from, from Tony. I'm um, the The... I suppose that moving away now uh, from from what's happened to um, the the recent announcement, which um, must come as um, music to the ears of the people in the south, that not only are we going to get a replacement pool, but we're also going to get a replacement school, and the time scale for delivering this seems to have uh, sped up as well. Yeah. Um, I just want to want to say, Phil, and thank Tony for his contribution on all of this today, because there's so much common sense in in, in what he's saying, and the challenges I've come up against as just being the Minister for S Department of Sport and Education. Um, but we're in the current existing processes. But I think what it has actually achieved from all of this, and it, it's you know there's not been a lot um, of 
discussion. Um, Barbara's had to do the discussions with her employees. I think it shows, and what Tony's just said with regards to the rate contribution, that we do need to look at this further. That's what I've now committed to do. And I think at that point, we had to have a data sharing agreement in place to be able to get get involved in the data as the Department of Education, Sport and Culture. And I think now that we can look at this more closely, um, there was a steering board with representatives from, from each of the pools on that steering board that have come up with this report. Now, I've sat in those meetings and um, whilst we're very, we've worked a lot closer with the South over recent years, um, you know, there's, there's still from from the north and the west they want to retain their pools so it is exactly what tony said there's going to have to be a, go a strong government direction that comes out of this further piece of work and i think that's a really important thing that has to happen now we've i've committed to, to doing that um the chief minister's fully supportive of that happening and i've said i will return back um, in June to give us that time to discuss with the board. So I think that's really important. And I think Tony's been sitting in on some of my meetings because I've been saying exactly what he said. Yeah. Um, just <laughs> fly on the wall. <laughs> yeah. But but just 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 for, for for the people people of the South. Um obviously since since we've been able to announce um more clearly the Treasury commitments, um we are meeting with our, our school um, community. I've said to my department, I want to be able to put a letter and some, uh, you know, a, a little pack out to our parents in the South, to all of our parents, whether it's primary or secondary, to say what the commitment is from the education department now and, and through to completion of this project. We do hope to have um, s s something being seen, come, you know, uh, D development on the site. The, I, I must mention, actually, we have invested already in all of the fields for those sports facilities. They are available for use now. And um, there has been some challenges around that with COVID and everything, but they are available. So that's there. The underground um, air source, the, the heat pumps are there, ready to go. And they've got capacity to, to accommodate new school and new pool. Um, and that's certainly what we, what we want from it. Um, with regards to how we're going to communicate that. I've said I want to do a public meeting with, with our, our education community in the South and hopefully that will be before half term. And uh, I suppose, Minister, the, the encouraging news, and I'll bring Bar Barbara in, in in a second, um, the encouraging news is that the new pool is going to be substantially cheaper to run, isn't it? Um, obviously, you know, the... the Pool and, and you know Barbara's admitted some of the challenges there. It, it's um, it's been built in the seventies. Certainly, we want to build a real sustainable um, pool for the future that's there for, and the longevity of it. And what and what we need to remember is every, you know the NSC has been there. And I don't know if that was in in Tony's time, but if you look at the investment in the NSC and what we achieved, I think it was for twenty five million pounds then. What investment's gone into the NSC since that time has only been recently 4.5 million. So if you think 30 million pounds investment in the NSC and the fantastic facility we've got. When I was in Guernsey, when I was in Guernsey, uh, in Guernsey, sorry, at the Island Games, I've spoke to all my other colleagues. They, they are enviable of the sports facilities we have on the island and we need to make sure we're replicating that in the south. And I see the south of the island being the start of what we do call regional sports hubs because it will all be on one site very similar it'll be like a mini nsc barbara sorry you were trying to come in i the minister's just answered my question i was going to say we we're all sitting here talking about the pool the pool the pool but if you look at the kpp report one of the recommendations was they haven't built standalone pools um, since the 80s on our sister island we shouldn't be looking at building just a pool. We need to look at a sports facility and all that goes with that. It needs to become a destination. I think it's fair to say totally. that that's a long-standing policy of government going back at least 15 years, maybe more, where there was a report, independent report done, and it said regional sports facilities need to be developed in the Isle of Man. All of this came from the year of sport, which, as you remember, Noel Kringle went to Tinwald and got Tinwald to agree in 1985. And we developed from that and the departments de developed from that in terms of uh, getting reports done. 
how we'd have facilities. The NSC being a classic, I was involved in the NSC because when it uh, was being built, I was the minister responsible as we started the build. I went to Tinwald and secured the money. But the point is, there was a clear plan. What's happened is, somewhere along the way, that plan has got blurred. People's responsibilities have got blurred. There's been a change of personnel and we need somebody to drag it back so there's a clear line of communication between council ministers, the minister responsible, and the southern, north, and western regional pool and boards, so they know exactly where they stand. And I think what Tony's just said is exactly what I've been battling yeah. with for the last two years, and I've come forward with it. As I say, the master plan's there. I'm happy mm. um, to, to be. I will share that with the southern community, and it's not. It's not just our education. It will be that national strategic yeah. vision for sports hubs in the south. I've committed to the island plan commitment. It's the economic strategy. It'll bring growth to, mm. to Castletown if they've got these amazing facilities. And that's what they are, you know, once people see some more of the images. And I'm the first to actually come forward back in time with those previous policies put in by the late um, um, Noel Kringle and, and Tony and, and colleagues on infrastructure for the south. And, and Barbara, I mean... Whilst the minister has given us a a, a year's reprieve, and and chances are um, we we'll get an, a a year or two after that, um, the pool is starting to creak a little bit, isn't it? It's it's certainly past its uh, it, its its best days. It's a very old pool, Phil. <laughs> yeah, but it has been upgraded over it, the, the years. years. It's, not, it has. it's not old, old. No. I mean, it's old in age, but the equipment's been upgraded. The, the equipment's been upgraded. Been our staff have been trained up yeah. to modern, and Absolutely. the the pool works very well. The three hundred sixty five thousand, which the survey said um, was necessary to bring the pool up to give it another, I think the was about fifteen years of life. So three hundred sixty five thousand pounds. Which and is I'm about looking at the minister. It's yeah. a minimal sum, to be honest with yeah. you. Yeah. Which and, is about and, ten thousand a year in loan charges. And, I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. And can and I just? Can well, I just no, I, I, oh, go yeah, on then. Yeah. Um, so, 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 minister, then um, the uh, what what you have committed to is that, provided something uh, fairly serious doesn't happen to the pool, uh, the pool will be kept open until such time as a replacement pool is built. When do you think? Um, a, a pool actually will be bent, built because there have been lots and lots of promises on this, haven't there? And uh, or, or false dawns, perhaps, would be a better way of putting it. I have, and I think moving into this design stage, obviously, all these conceptual drawings I've got, they, they've been done professionally, and it'll be great to get those out into the community. But as we've seen with other government projects, if you don't get it right at the design stage, you, you fall foul and additional costs. And I think it's really important to get that right at that point point um, and to move forward um, the expectation is school and and sports complex with a swimming pool be completed by 2030 so so we're, you know it sounds a long time seven years but if you think the structure of building a new a new school and obviously costs could increase in that period of time we know that and certainly since since the first design I seen just for a school on that site um, government had invested and put into the capital project I think it was 45 million pounds that I believe is still there but as I say I'm I'm fighting for all these facilities in the south to make sure it's a commitment um, from from this administration to be able to go forward to see that opened uh, for, for the people of the south priority is the school and um, that has been the focus of the southern MH case in this administration it's been the school and um, the pools recently come into into the conversations so um, but as a priority for my department is to make sure we are as following previous government policy which regional sports hubs and creating that environment in the south and i think it's you know you are talking multi multi millions of pounds of investment if we think just a, a school initially was mentioned at 45 million you know and it the, the way inflation has gone um, but what one of the things um, you know j just to touch the budget process for my department is an annual budget process i do frequently say it doesn't work in education um at, you know and, and the treasury minister is, is 
aware of this, having been the minister, because our schools operate outside of a fiscal year. It's a September to July um, school. So, you know, there there is merit to, to look at this differently. We can look at it differently. And I think, really, it, it is the start of, of some reform in this area. And I, it would be great to, for this to, to be a piece of reform that comes through successful for everybody on the island. And final word then to Barbara. We, we're just about to run out of time. I would just very quickly like to say the word used here was for the growth of Castletown. I would like to say it's not just. Castle These regional Town, sports yeah. hubs are not just for the growth yeah, yeah. of Castletown. They are for the south of the Absolutely. island and the island as a whole. Absolutely. So what do you think? Is Speaker Watterson right? Is the Minister right? Are they both right? Are you convinced that we will ever see a new pool in the south? Confused? Me too. Don't forget this programme is available as a podcast on Manx Radio's website. I'm Phil Gorn. Gone on my own case, Thanks for listening.